We're going back to Comic-Con. The idea, obviously, is to kick last year's butt. We gotta make sure that this will actually work or we're back to the drawing board. So many of the other designs are leaning toward dragon-esque. We wanna go different face that's maybe a little more dragon-like. I don't mind having the horns. Don't go too angry and, and then play with some color. Yeah, I'll do some quick tweaks and see, uh, see if you're feeling it. Okay. Bowden, he sculpted uh, the majority of it. I mean, it was pretty much set when they decided they wanted to go for a full animatronic lip sync mouth. Some things had to change because Bowden's original design had uh, T-Rex teeth where the top row is extended. It's, it's showing at all times out and hanging and showing. So in order to do a speaking, we need lips that can touch. So um, we made the palette entirely inside, made some new teeth and gums that are gonna go inside and just adjusted the lips to make it so that they would meet up for a talking. We have a design, but in reality that design is the sculpture um, as a 3D model. So we have, we can output it. There's a number of different options as to how to realize one of these sculptures. So you can sculpt it in clay, you can have it milled out of foam, you can have it grown into the full-size piece. It's all a balance of time, budget, manpower, materials costs, all of those mixed together to see what the final cost will be at the end. If I send it over to Alchemia, they can mill it out. It will come back rough, um, not 100%, which is fine, because then we can sculpt that. So that made the most sense in this case. So basically what we're doing is we've taken the digital file from Legacy and then Set it on this machine. This is a five-axis CNC router, and this is a subtractive process, basically machining the foam away to get to that final object that we're, we're, we're looking to do. You can say how big something is, but until you actually see it on your equipment and see what you're up against. You get these machines that are basically sculpting the rough form overnight, over the weekends, over holidays, when he's not even there half the time. It's just, it's sculpting by itself. So Monday through Thursday, so tomorrow, at some time tomorrow, the shop should have that in their hands. Right. I have the head. The head is right here. You can have two or three guys completely refine that sculpture, add detail, add realism, take out the eyes. A lot of stuff that we don't have to do here on the computer, it goes off to Alfred. We keep working on other things, and when the sculpture comes in, I just throw the team on. And so it's not a team of sculptors for a week, to get that done. It's you know two or three guys for a couple of days. This is the horns. The horns. So it basically goes right here. That's the socket right there? Yeah. Yeah, it's fur from basically from here back. So we don't need to oh, see what's fur. Oh, yeah, I see. It, it, oh, that's it great. transitions to fur. Okay, cool. The choice that we had in foam and what was available to us wouldn't have all of the detail in there. So when it comes back here, we hand over the maquette that has all of that detail to the traditional sculptors who are going to sculpt it right back into the foam, have reference between photos and this maquette, and bring that detail back into the foam way faster than letting the machine do it. We always try to refer back to real stuff at some, at some level just to see. Because he talks, you know, this nice fleshy, fleshy bit would be kind of cool. You can see it in there, like, this all turns kind of like skin. You know, it's kind of tricky to figure out where the scales stop and where the big, mushy lip starts. Yeah. All three of these gentlemen have played very important roles in the creation of the dinosaurs from the Jurassic Park movies. Chris Swift over here is known as the Raptor Guy in Jurassic Park 1. Mark Matry, Stegosaurus from Jurassic 2, The Lost World. And Paul Mejias, he on the Gallimimus, the running dinosaurs from Jurassic Park 1. It's reminiscent because actually Mark Stegosaurus was the first large character that we did in Yellow Foam. So this is the same technique we used on the Stegosaurus. For Jurassic, everything was still clay. So it's the same technique we used on Jurassic 2. So it brings back some memories. Back when we did with pets in clay, now it's all grown. When we're done with the basic sculpture, they're being, it gets painted all over. Once you paint it, then you go back in with some, like a little bead of clean clay along that line, and then you sculpt that clean clay, and then you paint it one more time. And now we're off the molding. Go to Wired.com for the entire Giant Creature series.